to make sure that the sound is can you hear me okay uh, we were discussing robust control systems and one of the key issues that we had talked about in the previous class which was before thanksgiving was the sensitivity function capital S of small s which is 1 over 1 plus GCG so this is S T of G which is del T over T over del G over G so typically when you talk about so the picture I want you to have in mind G C G this is R of S this is Y of S and the idea is if my system transfer function changes over a period of time uh, we would like to make sure that we design a controller such that the overall system still meets the performance specification no matter how the system transfer function G changes. I mean, it has to change within certain range, but uh, as long as it is within the acceptable range, uh, we want to make sure that the controller is able to perform with the updated system. And the way to understand or concept conceptualize this uh, issue is through the sensitivity function which tells you how the closed loop transfer function t so t is y of s over r of s so it tells you how the closed loop transfer function changes as you change the original system transfer function the open loop transfer function okay and we did the derivation in the previous class so today um, I want to talk about an important topic which is types of uncertainty that's number one topic and the number two topic is how do you assess the stability of a third order system when the system itself could have parametric uncertainty its parameters could change So what could be uh, what could be uh, well instead of asking let me just write it so the first kind of uncertainty is additive uncertainty so your actual transfer function is g a of s which is some nominal transfer function g of s plus a of s okay so this is the transfer function that I have for designing the controller but I know that the actual transfer function might differ from the transfer function I have by some additive factor. So that's known as additive uncertainty. And as we can, not we can, but under the assumption that G A and G have same number of unstable poles under this assumption if a j omega is less than 
1 plus gj omega for all omega then ga over 1 plus ga is stable this is stable if g over 1 plus g is stable Okay. So one of the things we learned in the previous class, the question of robust control system design is to compute a GC that meets performance specifications for all systems G in a certain set capital P. Uh, that's where we stopped in the previous class. And what's the very basic performance specification? Well, the basic performance, the, the very basic performance specification is that the closed loop system must be stable. Right? That is something that we all want. And in the case of additive uncertainty where your actual transfer function differs from the transfer function you have by just an additive factor, then assuming G A and G have same number of unstable poles, if A of J omega, so the uncertainty magnitude is less than the magnitude of 1 plus G J omega for all omega, so it has to be true for the entire spectrum. Then if your original closed loop system was stable with unity feedback, then the actual closed loop system is also going to be stable. I shouldn't say original, I should say nominal, because this is the transfer function you have. This is an approximation to the original system, the actual system that you have, OK? Is the importance of this result clear? So you have a transfer function. That's not the true transfer function of the actual system. The true transfer function is GA. The transfer function you have is G of S. And there is an additive uncertainty with this transfer function that you have. As long as this condition is satisfied, well, these, this assumption is satisfied and this condition is satisfied. And the closed loop system is stable for the nominal system, then your actual system will also be closed loop stable. Okay, and that's the very bare minimum performance specification that a robust control system design needs to meet. Okay, now if you have GC here, so GCG, you can have an appropriate uh, result for that particular system also. If you have a controller. So this is of course with unity feedback, but if you have a if you have a controller, then you have to just replace G with GCG everywhere. OK. Then the second kind of uncertainty is multiplicative uncertainty. Where the actual system transfer function is the nominal transfer function into 1 plus ms. Okay, I'm going to make the same assumption as I made here. So assume G, M, and G have the same number of unstable poles. 
So this addition of 1 plus ms doesn't introduce any unstable, any new unstable poles. Then the result is if m j omega is less than 1 plus 1 over g j omega or all omega, g m over 1 plus g m is stable if g over 1 plus g is stable. Okay, so we have the same thing. We have a multiplicative uncertainty. This is the transfer function I have. The actual transfer function differs from the transfer function that I have by a multiplicative factor, 1 plus ms. m is the un unknown, par unknown transfer function here. And I'm going to make an assumption that this 1 plus ms is not going to introduce any other unstable pole. Okay, so therefore, gm and g would have the same number of unstable poles. Then, if this condition is satisfied, so m of j omega is small enough for all values of omega, then the closed loop system, the actual closed loop system is going to be stable if the nominal closed loop system is also stable. It's the same result, just that the condition the condition that the uncertainty has to satisfy is completely different in these two situations. Okay. These are the conditions where the uncertainty is something that we don't know, but there's only one uncertainty. Okay, so There is another form of uncertainty, which is parametric uncertainty. And I want to erase something. So let me erase this part. That's one, two, and three. So what is parametric uncertainty? Let's say my G of S or one plus let's say the denominator polynomial. of closed loop system is given by s raised to n a0. So the parametric uncertainty says that I don't know these values exactly, these coefficients a0, a1, all the way up to an minus 1, but I know the range that they lie in. So I know that ak is upper bounded by beta k, lower bounded by alpha k, 
for all k m 0, 1 to n minus 1. So when I sit in the vehicle, the mass of the vehicle increases by only, oh, I shouldn't say what my mass is. Uh, uh, okay, when a normal person sits in a vehicle, let's say the mass increases by 170 pounds. I'm not of 170 pounds, okay. Uh, but you know, a normal vehicle can fit anywhere between one to five passengers. So therefore, the mass could change from 170 pounds all the way to 1,000 pounds, OK? So that leads to parametric uncertainty, OK? Because the parameter, mass is a parameter for the system transfer function, and that parameter changes. But it's not like the mass can change to 1 million pounds, OK? So there is still a range between 170 pounds to 1,000 pounds, and the mass can only change in between those two numbers, OK? So that's the parametric uncertainty. If you have an aircraft, and you have all the passengers on the aircraft, you have the luggage on the aircraft, uh, but the only thing that changes over the period of time is the, again, the mass of the aircraft because the fuel gets spent. Same thing for spacecraft as well, rocket engines, where fuel is about 80% of the mass. Um, so again, the fuel gets spent, and therefore the mass changes, and that leads to parametric uncertainty. And we are again interested in knowing whether the system is going to be unstable or not. OK. So for additive uncertainty, we know what the condition is for stability. For the multiplicative uncertainty, we know what the condition is for instability or stability. Suppose I give you this problem, so I give you the denominator polynomial of the closed loop system, and I tell you that the coefficients of this polynomial lie in a certain range. And I ask you whether the closed loop system is going to be stable or not. How would you do that? How would you prove that? Let's look at a simple example. S3 plus A2 S square plus A1S plus A0. So this is my uh, denominator polynomial. And this is the denominator polynomial of the closed loop system. So it includes controllers and everything. And I'm asking if A0, A1, and A2 lie in certain range, is the closed loop system going to be stable? Yeah. Root array for what? Stability. Root array for? Of the closed loop system. Yeah, but I don't know what these values are, right? Because they lie in a range, but I don't know what the value is. Could you check like the limits like, of that range? OK, so let's, so this is a, th there are three different parameters in the closed loop system, denominator of the closed loop system. They all lie in certain range, so. So this is my A0 axis, A1 axis, and A2 axis. And let's say my this is the uncertainty set. So my parameter A0, A1, and A2 lie within this box. OK, so this, is, this sort of uncertainty is similar to a box. Uh, your parameters lie in a box in a What's the mathematical name for this? Cuboid, OK? Uh, the parameters lie. So you could have any parameter within this cuboid in the closed loop system. And that depends on which situation you are in. So if you want to go for a beer with me after the class, then we'll have to go in the same car. So my car could have 170 pounds or, no, not 170, OK. OK, 193 pounds plus your own mass, OK? so. So that's the range of parametric uncertainty I'm talking about. So, so Jeff's idea is that, 
So your idea is that you will look at, you will construct the root array for what? The boundaries, like the very outside. So these points, all these points, all these points, perhaps the one in the back as well. You know, that's a beautiful idea. I like the idea, okay? So he, Jeff's point is that let's look at the root array. Let's construct a root array for all these points. So I pick A0, A1, A2 accord at this point, then I pick it at this point, I pick at this point, construct a root array, assess whether the stability, whether the closed loop system is stable or not, or the denominator has roots in the left half plane or not. What are the other ideas you can try? So that's one idea. What else would you like to try? How about just randomly picking points in this cube and then assessing the stability? Because he's only assessing stability at the, at the boundary points. Do you know what will happen at one of the interior points? Are you sure that they won't be unstable? No, right? So somehow we need to also take care of the interior point. So how about we just randomly pick 20 points within the set and try and assess the stability at one of those 20 set of parameters, every one of them. That's one possible idea. Another more exhaustive possible idea is I, I draw a grid, a very fine grid, and assess the stability at each and every point on that grid. And so if I have three parameters and I divide this interval into 10 intervals, then I have 1,000 different root arrays to build and assess the stability. Okay? Whose idea is better? Jeff's idea is better. Okay, so all the ideas I came up with are sort of not so good ideas, not attractive. Okay, so some, so a, a, a Russian mathematician called Kharetonov, uh, he came up with the following idea. I think it is 1970s, but I may be wrong. Uh, so he came up with the following idea for this third order polynomial. This is known as Kharitonov's vertex polynomial. So he said, said the following, I have this cube, and I construct the following polynomials. So I need to put the coordinate axis. So this part is A0, this is A1, this is A2. So I have one vertex here one vertex here, one vertex here, and one here. Beta naught, beta one, alpha two, beta naught, alpha one, alpha two,
Jeff, you were born in wrong century. Okay, so he said, I'm going to construct polynomials at these four sets of, th these four uh, uh, points. So I'll pick parameters at these three, these four points, construct a polynomial, and I'll just look at the stability or root array for those four polynomials, and if they are all stable, then the entire system is stable, no matter which where the point A0, A1, and A2, the parameters A0, A1, and A2 come from. So I'm going to write it out explicitly. So Q1 of S is S cube plus alpha 2 S square beta 1 s plus beta 0 Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay, so let's go over it once more. Oh, let me write what the main result is. Theorem, if Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 have roots in left half plane, Then D of S is has roots in the left half plane. For all A1, for all A0, A1, A2. So these A0, A1, A2 are in this region. Yes. How can we only check like four other points four. in all the corners? Yes. It holds for the entire set itself. So the only problem with your idea was you were checking at eight points where you actually only need to check at four points. But you were closest to what he had originally thought. Yes. No, it, no, well, yes, it does matter. So these are the four points for third degree polynomial. He has uh, 
some formula for determining for higher order systems. Okay, but it's not exhaustive search. So you remember my two ideas were exhaustive search and random search. So it's not exhaustive search, it's not random search, it's not all the vertices, but very specific set of vertices. And if the denominator for all those vertices, so in the case of third order, there are only four vertex, but in the higher order system, you'll have more vertex to look for. But if that is satisfied, then it will be true for all possible realizations of the system. Okay. So this was an open problem for many, many years, I think over 50 years, to determine under what conditions would parametric uncertainty lead to a stable system. Like, it, it, it's not clear, right? If somebody tells me this problem in 1930s or 1940s, I just wouldn't know how to assess the stability of closed loop system if I have parametric uncertainty of this form. It's just absolutely not clear. And certainly Jeff, it was clear to Jeff, but it wasn't clear to me when I heard of this problem. Uh, but Kharitono was thinking along similar lines and he came up with this idea that actually you don't have to do an exhaustive search. Just look at a few vertex polynomials um, and assess the stability using Ruth array. Right? So you can use Ruth array to assess the stability of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. All four of them are stable, then it implies that the closed loop system is stable. Okay. So, so far we have talked about three types of uncertainty. One is additive uncertainty, other is multiplicative uncertainty. And you have an assignment problem in assignment six regarding multiplicative uncertainty. So you didn't know that there is a pole at 1000, but there was a pole at minus 1000. So, so that's a multiplicative uncertainty. And you saw that if you design a controller for the nominal system, the system that you have identified, and it had a pole lurking around minus 1,000 or minus infinity, then you could get into trouble because your system, your closed loop system could be unstable. So that was the reason why I gave you that assignment, to understand why a robust control system is important. Uh, you must have seen how the magnitude and the phase plot look so similar until 50 or 100 radians per second, it only differs after that point of time. So if you just collected data from zero radian per second to 100 radian per second in that example, you plotted the body plot and you just said, okay, it looks like a second order system, let's just stop the experimentation and let this be the system. Uh, you would have a multiplicative uncertainty in that, uh, in that system because of which your closed loop system could be unstable. And that's why uh, you want to study robust control system design so that even if you have parametric uncertainty or additive or multiplicative uncertainty, you want to make sure that your closed loop system doesn't become unstable. So these are the three topics, uh, sorry, three separate stability criteria that uh, you need to use depending on the uncertainty that you have in the system. Any question? Okay, so let's apply this parametric uncertainty stuff to an example. So I have a system G of S of the following form, A0, over S cube plus A two S square plus A one S. So that's my system. It has a unity feedback loop. So what's the denominator for the closed loop system? Let's try to find out. So that's G over one plus G.
Okay, so the closed loop transfer function is S Q plus A two S square plus A one S plus A zero. And I have the range as follows. So four is less than or equal to a zero, less than or equal to five, one less than or equal to a one, less than or equal to three, two less than or equal to a two, less than or equal to four. So I have these parametric uncertainty. And I want to know if the closed loop system is going to be stable or not. Okay, so what do I need to do? I have identified the denominator polynomial D of S. which is this. Now I need to form Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Let me raise this side. What is Q1 of S? Alpha 2. What is alpha 2? 2, right? What's beta 1? So it's upper bound on A1, so that's 3. What's beta naught? That's low, upper bound on A naught, so that's 5. What about Q2 of S? I have S cube, beta 2, so that's upper bound on A2, so 4. Alpha 1 is lower bound on A1, so that's 1. And alpha 0, which is 4. Q3, beta 2, so 4, beta 1, that's 3, alpha 0, which is 4, and Q4 of S. Can someone tell me what Q4 of S is? S cube. Sorry? Plus 2S squared. 2S squared. Plus 1S plus 5. Right. Okay. Now we need to construct root array for all these four polynomials but I'm going to construct it only for Q2 and Q4 because that's where most of the interesting stuff happens. Sorry? How did you determine that you were just going to construct for Q2 and Q4? I 
determine that you oh you so uh, because I know the answer that's why <laughs> something funny happens with q2 and q4 but q1 and q3 are stable okay so let's look at what happens with q2 and q4 in reality you will have to check for all four well this is also reality but you're not going to do that Let's do Would go in the first row. One one. one. Four four. I'm looking at Q two. This is the one I'm looking at right now. S raised to one zero zero. What does that imply? Auxiliary polynomial, right? So uh, Q2 of S is actually S squared plus 1, S plus 4. Yeah. So this is the auxiliary polynomial for Q2 of S. So Q2 is marginally stable. Okay, it's not unstable, but it's marginally stable. All right, let's look at Q4. S cube, S square. <coughs> First row will have one one. Second row will have two five. What's the entry in the third row? Minus three over two. Minus three over two. What about S zero? We put a zero here, so that's five. How many unstable roots Q4 has? Two. There are two sign changes, so one sign change and the second sign change. Okay, so Q4 is unstable. Okay, so since Q4 is unstable, you could have a situation in your original system that for some specific configuration, for some specific set of parameters, your system would be unstable, your closed loop system would be unstable. So this would imply for some sets of parameters the closed loop system is unstable yes if this one was stable 
what would the case be then? Since Q's then right? you would have, for some set of parameters, your closed loop system would be relatively stable. Okay. Because Q3, sorry, Q2 is relatively stable. Yes? So if we wanted to see how we could make this more stable, would we um, narrow the, the parameters? Yes. Until we, we have That's right. So you would put a controller here with perhaps very high gains so that these parameters, the range of the parameters would shrink in some way and all these four polynomials for the new system would be stable. Okay, so that's the robust control design part. So I'm thinking of like that cube, could you actually find the cube inside of that cube where it's like stable, like the region? Uh, I'm not sure whether, I haven't read his paper, so I'm not very sure whether you can actually figure out in what region would the system be unstable or not. But I'm guessing this is the cube, and if this vertex turns out to, ha to be the set of unstable parameters or parameters which leads to instability, then I guess this is the region where the system would be unstable. And then as you go, inwards, then your system would become more stable. Yeah. That would be my guess, but I'm not sure whether that's proven in the paper or not. Okay. So unfortunately, we don't have time to go into robust control design, but the idea is pretty clear. You want to design a controller so that the sensitivity under normal operating conditions for normal range of frequencies is as small as possible so that your system is, doesn't become unstable. If you have additive, multiplicative, or parametric uncertainty, you want to design the controller in such a manner that those stability criterions are satisfied. So for, remember the stability criterion where A of J omega less than, was it? 1 plus g of j omega. So this was for additive. For multiplicative, it was m of j omega less than 1 plus 1 over g j omega. And for parametric uncertainty, it's this. So you want to make sure that you design a controller such that these conditions are satisfied for the, you know, this g would be replaced by g c g. So that's what we would, uh, that's what the robust, the entire field of robust control design essentially tries to address that particular problem. Now, of course, this is only stability. The performance specification here we are talking about is only stability of the closed loop system, but you could have other performance specification like percent overshoot and so on. And you would want to make sure that those specifications are also met. So, you know, I'm sure many of you would have flown or would have seen how a flight works. So you have these air hostesses that move up and down the aisle taking all the food items and stuff, you know, newspapers, magazines, food items, and so on. So that also is a parametric uncertainty on the airplane. So some people are going to toilet, some air hostesses are moving around. Um, and you don't want that for some specific configuration, so if two people are in the toilet on the front, if the air hostess is serving food in the back, then the percent overshoot of the flight goes up to 10% or 20%, right? So that kind of thing is not uh, good for the passengers in the flight. So you want to make sure that your system is robust to all these uncertainties that would be uh, applied on your system. So flights also have uncertainties because of turbulence, right? So when turbulence hits, you will see that the wings of the flight would go up and down like this, and that adds to the existing dynamics of the flight. So if you had never flown, so Wright brothers never flew a flight before, and when they went up in the air, they saw that, okay, their wings are fluttering, it's called flutter. So if their wings are fluttering and they hadn't accounted for that in their control system design, then they're um, their aircraft could crash.
because of the unmodeled dynamics, because when they were building the aircraft, they didn't really model the fluttering dynamics. So there is quite a bit of research that happens in, in aerospace department that tries to address how to design controllers uh, when there is fluttering in the aircraft. Okay, and it's, a, it's an important problem. And so fluttering is one of the multiplicative uncertainty on the flight uh, transfer function. I'm trying to think what other would be multiplicative uncertainty. When you have unmodeled dynamics that happens during operations, but when you are designing the controller, you wouldn't know whether that dynamics will happen or not. I can't think of any. You know, I have an undergrad in aerospace, so I, I get most of the examples from the aerospace area, which is not good. I'm in electrical engineering now. Yeah. What would the additive uncertainty example be? I can't think of uh, anything specific. Uh, it's there in the book, uh, but they haven't given any example where additive uncertainty would be uh, in a specific system. Maybe they'll have something in the assignments exercise, but I haven't really looked at it, so I don't know. Um, so parametric is mostly mass changing, resistance changing, inductance changing, so that those are parametric uncertainty. Um, I'm looking at a power electronics uh, project where the gate voltage and the gate threshold, whatever that means, changes during operations, okay? So that's a parametric uncertainty over a lifetime of an electronic device. Um, additive uncertainty, that's a good question, I don't know. I'll, I'll look up online and try to figure something out and I'll get back to you in the next class when there is an additive uncertainty. Sorry? DC bias or something? Just like it's operating at a higher DC voltage or something. Operating at a higher frequency? Like if you've got a constant adding. Ah, that's, I mean, uh, yeah, could be, yeah. I don't know. Okay, anything else? Any questions on this, robust control design? No? Okay, so in the next class, I'm going to talk about, no, I'm going to review the entire course, put everything in perspective, so hopefully that would be useful. And then I'm going to have uh, an office hours on Thursday. What time would work best for all of you? Oh, Thursday, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. The whole day will work best for you, so. Could you be there from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m.? No, I have several other things happening during the day. Uh, okay, I'll probably keep it 12 to 1. Would that work, 12 to 1? We get like two hours. 12 to 1.30. So at 1.30 to 3.30, I have several meetings scheduled, so I can't. I could do 3.30 to 4, so after my meeting. And I could do 12 to 1.30. Would that work oh. for everyone? Okay. Let's do that then, 12 to 1.30 and then 3.30 to 4. I'll send out an email. Thank you all, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Happy Cyber Monday. <laughs>